All right, yes, we are live. Good morning, everyone, from Fly on the Wall Productions on North Main Street in Barrie. It is an absolute pleasure to have you along. Thanks for streaming us, no matter if you're on Facebook or YouTube. Remember, you can find us everywhere you get your podcasts on the web and at airedoutvt.com. Absolute pleasure to have you on board. Um, Happy National Burrito Day today. Uh, Roger Hill is saying April showers going to bring snow plowers. Actually, that was Sherilyn that said that. But uh, Roger Hill is saying cloudy skies today, another two to four inches, daytime highs into the lower 30s today. Uh, So some slick travel out there is going to be expected to continue today. So go easy no matter where you are this morning. Uh, And if you can stay home. Um, and I know there's a lot of people that are because uh, schools are closed, a lot of schools. Um, enjoy the time. Enjoy the time. Maybe uh, throw an extra log on the uh, on the wood stove and uh, just relax a little bit today if you can. Daytime highs again today, lower 30s. Tonight, cloudy. Uh, a little bit of light snow still down about 30. And then Friday, tomorrow, cloudy. Wet snow and rain, 30s for the high. Saturday looks like uh, cloudy, some scattered leftover rain and wet snow showers. Uh, Breaks of sun, though, on Saturday. Upper 30s Sunday, the better of the two. Uh, Morning clouds, but afternoon sun and the beginning of a little bit of a warm trend, 40 to 45 degrees for the high on Sunday. Don't forget to show us your car because tonight, 8 o'clock, we're going to be picking the latest winner in um in a promotion that we've been doing now for well this is uh i think week number nine if my math is correct we've been giving away a platinum car wash uh every week every friday morning uh to someone out there who has a filthy filthy car and many of us do uh, we give you the certificate for the car wash at rub a dub and you can use it anytime you want all you have to do is get on Facebook uh, to our page right there, uh, the pin post at the top. Uh, just post up a picture of your car, and just that's all you really have to do. And then you have to go through the car wash whenever you want. Uh, birthdays today, Jacob Roy, Jason Gauthier's on the list, Francis Brooks, Lacey Osborne, Ellen Thompson, Pete Haskins, Mark Covey, Erica Scott, uh, let's see, who else do we have? Mark Earl, TJ Powers is on the list today, Kathy Codling, Celeb List, Robert Downey Jr. turns 59, Jamie Lynn Spears is 33, and Eric Andre is 41 years old. Uh, don't forget, one spot left in the April 15th CDL course over at Giroux General Transport. If you want it, you better get on it. Uh, don't wait on this. Don't put this off. Uh, they have one spot left for the April 15th CDL course at Jeru General Transport. It's yours if you got it. Uh, 279-3325. Tracy will answer the phone. She'll get you all registered and signed up and ready to go. 279-3325. Just remember... Uh, to get your permit first. That is the uh, requirement now from the state. you got to get your permit first before you can take the course, but uh, easy to do. Um, and again, uh, if you miss this one, April 15th, the next CDL training is going to be starting up on June 15th, and they have uh, already opened up the roster uh, for the public on that. And the next hazmat theory training at Jeru General Transport, uh, April 19th at 2 p.m. So we're going to be pushing this out pretty hard on Facebook. We want to make sure that everybody uh, knows about it. Uh, Vermont headlines on the aired out page this morning. Thousands of power outages being reported across Vermont and New Hampshire this morning. Not as many in New York. We uh, are posting up the current power outages maps in Vermont and New York uh, on our Facebook page. Most schools in uh, the region 
are closed today. So again, expect uh, very slick travel today, slushy roads, another few inches of uh, snowfall on the way. Uh, snow and rain showers are going to be lingering into tomorrow and Saturday. Uh, this is a very slow-moving storm. Eventually should be heading out by late Sunday, setting us up for some nice high pressure and perfect, perfect forecast for Monday's solar eclipse. Uh, the national uh, stories that we are posting this morning, Texas immigration controversy kindles fight over Arizona's show me your papers law. If you want to read more about that, that's on our page. Uh, egg prices are rising again. Yes, it's making national news uh, fueled by a short supply caused by an outbreak of the bird flu. Um, Eclipse totality, I was reading up this morning, a 100-mile-wide path of this giant shadow from Texas to Maine. Um, and they're saying cities like Dallas, Indianapolis, Cleveland, and Buffalo um, are going to be good viewing spots. Parts of uh, Texas, however, including Dallas and Oklahoma, as well as uh, Louisiana and Arkansas, uh, thunderstorms, heavy thunderstorms and cloud cover so probably not the best in those states but here in vermont it is going to be just perfect uh, i was listening to roger hill this morning and he is saying it really couldn't get any better uh, for us here in vermont so it's going to be great um let's see also uh what do we have in national headlines uh, we have the judge presiding over former President Donald Trump's upcoming New York criminal trial, denying his motion to delay its start until after the Supreme Court rules on Trump's presidential immunity claim. Uh, this Every day, this story develops. This means that Trump's trial related to the hush money payments made to adult film star Stormy Daniels is going to begin with jury selection real soon, April 15th, so a week from this coming Monday. Wow. Dozens of migrants who were unexpectedly flown from Texas to Martha's Vineyard in 2022 can now sue the transport company, this according to a federal judge who has ruled in their favor. The destination of the flights arranged by Florida Governor Ron DeSantis was a surprise to both the migrants and the residents of this uh, little Massachusetts island. According to the lawsuit, some of the migrants alleged they were initially told they would be flown to a city in the Northeast, and if they got on the flight, they would be provided with stable housing, work, educational resources, food, and many other things. There you have it. Uh, world headlines. We have President Joe Biden speaking with Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu today in a phone call uh, that is going to stir things up a little bit more. Uh, th this rift between the two is going to be deepening, I'm sure, after that phone call today over the war in Gaza. Uh, this all after the Israeli airstrike that killed seven aid workers from the nonprofit World Central Kitchen biggest story in the world right now uh rescuers are uh and this is another big one also working to reach more than 600 people that are stranded in eastern taiwan after that 7.4 magnitude earthquake struck the island's east coast wednesday nine people killed a thousand injured um huge landslides i'm not sure if you've seen the pictures but 42 people missing it is tremendous uh, I think we have Raylene with us this morning. Good morning, Raylene. You. How are you? I'm doing well. I was able to just make a coffee real quick while we have power again. Yeah. Is it flickering, so, flickering over there at your place? Because it is here, too. It does. It goes on and off. And But you know what? Every time it goes off, guess what works? My light bulbs from Nelson's. Yeah. Show them. You got, got the little bulbs right, right here. here. You got yeah. it right here. Perfect. The, 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 the lights go off, and boop, those go on. This is the uh, the Nebo bulb. Um, yeah. I, I think they're like, what, 12 13 bucks over at Nelson's? Yeah, I'm going to have to talk to Bob about talking to somebody about getting me a coffee pot that will do the same. 
I don't, I don't know if that's going to happen. Um, but listen, we, we have uh, a, a, we have some police officers that are in the studio this morning um, that we're going to get yes. to uh, Mark Poulin and Brett Meyer. But it, I, I know that um, we've got some things coming up. The community calendar this morning is hopping. You've posted it's up some. Well. Yeah, you have posted up some great stuff happening this weekend. Uh, please do tell. So we have the pie breakfast at uh, the Berlin Fire Department, which we've been talking about like mad crazy yeah um that's happening this weekend um saturday in fact so you can go up there have some pie all you can eat uh 12 dollar entry uh six dollars for ages 10 and under uh, all proceeds go directly to the fire department for equipment things they might need uh you can start having your pie at 9 30 it goes straight till noon uh if you're going to donate a pie that starts at 8 a.m and yeah. they'll accept those pies up right up until 9 15 but that's it um, so right over there, 338 Payne Turnpike North in Berlin. Uh, they're going to have live music from Ray and Sam Burke, and they'll be joined by Donna Thunder. Um, amazing. Yeah. And they're going to give an award out for the best pie competitions. Um, they're going to do sweet and savory. So two categories there. Um, that'll be uh, at the same time is the Berlin craft fair that is from 10 to 4 right over there at the elementary school. So you can scoot right next door. Yeah. Check out what they have over there. On Sunday at U32, there's also a craft fair, a large craft fair there from 9 to 3. That's on Sunday at Union 32. Um, the Berry Rotary Club is also having a pie brunch on Saturday. That'll be held at the American Legion, and that is from 11 until 1. Um, let's see. What else do we have co going on? Um, we have the... the um, movie space jam uh this weekend a sunday evening at 6 p.m at the williamstown middle and high school um concessions will be available for that okay. tonight we have line dancing at the den tonight gonna be a crazy weekend actually a crazy three days at the den in williamstown line dancing tonight as we know um happens each week um, from six to seven is the beginners and from seven to nine is the advanced. But uh, then Friday night, the conniption fits are coming back. Uh, they were snowed out last time. They'll start at eight. And then Saturday, Borderstone, all old time rock and roll. Um, that also starts at eight. So that's coming up as well. We have cars and uh, coffee and cars coming up. Yes. On the 14th from 9 to noon at the Aspen Dental uh, parking lot right down there in front of Price Chopper. Can't wait for that. I can't wait for that either. I'm super excited to have that going on all summer long. And I hope there are many events throughout the city. We know that everybody's preparing for Monday. We have the... Um, Barry Partnership is doing a uh, eclipse party, block party here in the city. Looking forward to that as well. Um, blow up to glow up yes. is coming back to the city. I mean, come on. There's yep. so much stuff. There's going to be a color run in Williamstown. Um, jam-packed, but jam-packed for this weekend for sure with pie, lots and lots of pie everywhere, <laughs> and craft fairs. So yeah. um, I, make it a good weekend. I went to the Rotary Club um, All You Can Eat Pie Festival, if you will. That's what I'm going to call it, uh, last mm -hmm. year, which I think was the first one that they did. And, man, it was unbelievable. I mean, every every pie you could possibly imagine and it was all you can eat and it was i got into the chocolate cream pie a few times it was i think i gained like 15 pounds that day it was amazing yeah. well and as we know lots and lots of closings and delays most schools are closed or delays yes um we have um also the vermont courts if you have a hearing today 
check the page, check the schedule, call ahead, whatever. Um, a lot of the courts are a delayed opening or closed altogether. The court right here in Washington County is closed. Okay. All right. And I, I think that's also going to be the case on um, Monday. I believe so, yes. Some are closed and some are um, uh, closing early. Okay. If they're not closed altogether, they're closed closing early. And that is the same case for a lot of banks and businesses if they in credit unions if they haven't already closed um you know announced it keep your eyes open um but either closed or or closing early all right that, yeah. that, that's fantastic stuff thank you raylene well thank you all and tell the guys i said hello well you just did um they're right here <laughs> Uh, th thanks, Raylene, so much. All we right. we appreciate you. Um, Have a good day. Is it you know when Raylene was telling me that you guys were going to be uh, coming in this morning, I was like, oh, geez, what what if what have I done? What have we done? Um, I'm glad you're here, man. I'm glad both of you are back. Sheriff Mark Poulin, Deputy Sheriff, and uh, Captain Brett Meyer. Uh, it is an honor to have you guys back on Aired Out. Good morning to you both. Um, good morning. So so. I want to ask you, we have a lot to talk about, but first off, um, as Raylene was just mentioning about the courts, um, you know, being closed on Monday, what, what, what are you all going to be doing on Monday? Is it, is, <laughs> that is the, the question of the hour for darn sure. Yeah. We don't fully know yet. We still have a few coordination meetings to go to with the state police, um, with Montpelier city okay. uh, today. Those are going to be happening, but. Yeah. We just don't know what we don't know. So a yeah. lot of it's going to be reactionary in the moment. And it, there's supposed to be like a gazillion people that are coming to Vermont. I've heard hundreds of thousands. I think we're ago? over 200,000 at this point. Okay. And, and that's just the basically from our area north. Yes. So not, not even the southern part. So that's quite a, quite a group of people. So glad that they're not up here right now that would be bad yes because no well they'd all have you know all season tires on which they think would be absolutely fine it's all seasons <clears throat> um i'm so glad yeah. that, we, we work the valley often or the wastefield warren area so we hear that yeah, daily i'm sure you do i'm <laughs> sure you know the summer tires club is a thing yes really there are such things as summer tires um but it's it's going to be a busy day on monday for sure and, Indeed, and authorities are going to be everywhere. It's going to be a busy weekend as people are coming in this weekend, and then it's going to continue on to Monday. Yeah, and yeah, probably Tuesday. Yeah, yeah, I bet, I bet. Um, guys, again, welcome back to. How long has it been? I can't even remember. Um, it's well, it was. I know it was before the flood. Obviously, um, it's been a while. It's been a while. I think the last time I had you guys in here, I know we were talking about uh, in office yet? No. drinking and driving. Okay. I might not even have been the sheriff yet. So No, you weren't. No. Nope. No. Nope. No. Nope. You were campaigning for that. Um, so congratulations. Thank you. That's awesome. Um, and I say congratulations to both of you. Um, we're blessed to have you um, in our community. And we're also, um, Raylene and I were, were saying this yesterday, we're also very blessed that you guys are willing to come in and sit down and, and hop on a microphone and a camera uh, to talk um, because, you know, police can be a little, uh, you know, shy sometimes when it comes to <laughs> stuff like nice this. Put it. So we appreciate you very much. Um, what, what the hell's going on? You, we, we see the sign here in Barry uh, Sheriff's Office. Uh, that's been the case since July, since the flood. Um, what happened to the building in Montpelier? So when the flood happened, we were smart enough the day before we uh, moved the entire fleet of cruisers. We have 12 cruisers total and two snow machines and a checkpoint trailer up to Berlin PD. So that was a good thing. So none Very of that was thing. affected. Uh, the building itself, the our building sits up probably what, three feet above the parking lot, the first floor. Yeah. We had eight, eight, 
ish inches of water on the first floor. So that's three feet plus eight inches. So our basement was completely full to the rafters. Right. And then eight inches on the first floor. Wow. Yeah, it was something. So the cars would have been uh, would have been toast also. Oh, yes. Yeah. So we have a picture from the flood in 92 of a handful of our fleet sitting out front from the ice jam flood right up to the bottom of the windows. I remember that one well. We don't want to repeat of that. Yes. So. Thing, things happen quickly. Um, you guys know that. Uh, definitely not the first rodeo, but this one was really intense. It was bad. Yeah. yeah. It took our entire, um, all the utilities were in the basement, the, the, the power for our building and the court. It all runs through our building. So it took all of that, um, everything on the first floor. When they were cleaning, they found asbestos with a 124-year-old building. So that had to be dealt with. And then the rebuilding. So Fun times. Wow. This is you not what I signed fun. Up for. <laughs> <laughs> This is what neither one of us signed up for. Yeah, right. So all of a sudden... Um, the powers that be said we got to move uh, somewhere quickly uh, and set up camp somewhere. And who made that decision and what happened? How'd that all fall together? Literally, I made a phone call to uh, our friend Joe Allsworth, and within the hour, we had uh, a location. Yep. Tom Lozon called us up and said, hey, come check out the space. Okay. And we did, and it was clean, and it was dry, yeah. and, it, and uh, had power and internet and wind. So we've been there ever since. Okay. All right. How has that been? Eight, what nine months now? Whatever, eight nine months. <laughs> been, been a bit hectic. It's a, kind of a mixed bag. Yeah, you're talking uh, five offices that are basically right side by side, so it's been a little tight for us. Working off of folding tables. Yes. And, wow. Yep. But it, okay. it's worked out, and we're very thankful yep. for Tom for allowing us to have the space in the first place. Yes. So you're in here this morning with the exciting news that um, you're going to be going back home. So we begin moving, well, we've already started moving back, but we're hopefully opening for business at 10 Elm Street on the 18th of this month. Whoa. That's like tomorrow. What, my gosh. All right. A couple of weeks. They initially yeah. were talking about the starting the move uh, next Monday, and that would be bad. So yeah, right. Got delayed a week. Of course. Um, so we're all... We're all ready to go. New new stuff, uh, equipment replaced. I'm I'm guessing. So everything had to be taken out of the basement. So the hot water heater was there. All the electrical panels were there. The phone system, everything was in the basement. Yeah. So that had to be brought up into the first floor. And they made a bunch of modifications. We now ha have our own IT closet, and the, all the mechanical room is on its own. Um, there's actually a data network and outlets not one per room anymore ah. so it's been modernized nice led lighting drop ceiling all new paint all new floors um so that i mean that's big. really really nice that yes. that uh, you know uh, maybe this was a, a kind of a blessing in disguise you guys have some really nice improvements it in, is in some ways it has been yeah. yeah wow um so that's really cool and this is happening in another couple of weeks you'll you'll totally out of here in, we, in we should be gone we hope yes okay all right um w what's happening with with this summer you guys got some campaigns going on well, we're in the middle of a campaign actually started this morning our distracted driving campaign started this morning runs through monday okay and then uh, starting may 20th will be the, the buckle up campaign which used to be called click it or ticket yes and it's now buckle up vermont that runs from may 20th through june 1st and we'll be sponsoring that again this year to the area departments. Okay. Um, what, what, what are we talking, like PSAs that are getting pushed out to the media? and We'll be doing, there's actually the week before is uh, for public service um, to be able to do their announcements. And then starting the actual 20th, we have uh, groups of, of uh, details that we'll have set up. We'll be out doing aggressive enforcement in different areas throughout okay. the county. I see uh, distracted driving all the time. Yep, so it's I, it's rampant. I saw it yesterday, just in the just in the the traffic that's backing up right here behind you uh, on North Main Street, um, waiting for the light stop, roll stop, roll on the phone the whole time. Yep. Um, it's amazing. It's gotten extremely worse. Um, one of the big things that you see is. I mean, literally, the traffic lights at uh, North Main and 62 or North Main Maple Avenue. Yeah. One right after another. And 
obviously that those people will be dealt with here yeah. <laughs> shortly. But uh, uh, with that said, it's it's out of control. I think some people don't realize it's against the law to, to text or talk on the phone um, while they're sitting at a traffic light. But uh, yeah. the law changed back quite a few years ago that it is. Yeah. Um, obviously, you can you can use your cell phone if, in fact, you're got it in a holder. But people have vehicles today that they can hook up to their to their vehicle to their car. Yeah. I mean, the phone is me to their car, and uh, instead they rather hold it in their hand. I'm not quite sure why that is, but right. Even our cruisers have Bluetooth now. They yep. didn't at first, but they do now too, and they're pretty basic. So. Yeah. Sure. And it's not just the uh, it's not just the <clears throat> The cell phone, it's the sandwich, it's uh, the makeup, it's, it's the, the uh, books. I've the seen books. people shaving. Come on, Come on. <laughs> really? <But>. Indeed. <laughs> you know the the guy shaving going down the road. That still is just like wow. <laughs> it, it's common going down the interstate and watching somebody oh. reading the newspaper oh, on my. their on their steering wheel as they're going down the interstate at sixty five. Unbelievable. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's so important. Uh, I'm glad you guys are going to be pushing that. So that's that's going to be over the next couple of weeks. Um, buckle up, obviously. Um, you know, and I think I told you guys the last time you were in here. I'm one of these dudes that has the uh, the habit of always buckling up, but buckling up two miles after I've left the drive. I shouldn't be telling you this. You guys are going to be stalking me now and <laughs> watching me, but, you know, pulling out of the driveway, then buckling up after your mile or two down the road. It's a little late. Yeah. And Sherilyn gives me hell for it. So, so does my nine-year-old now. Um, but, yeah, you, you've got to you got to buckle up, no matter who you are, where you are, where yep. you're driving. Uh, back road doesn't matter um, because you just don't know what's going to happen. I see um, I, there's, there's some stuff in the news about uh, body cams that I'm seeing now. Um, there's more popularity now in uh, webcams, uh, dash cams uh, for vehicles. Um, it's, it's interesting to see all this. And, of course, there's stuff in the news now about um, cameras uh, possibly getting into work zones. Uh, I'm sure you guys have have been hearing about this. We've been watching the bill. We've been yes. watching the bill. <laughs> We're not too uh, excited about that one in particular. Yeah, but for a very specific reason. Talk to me about that. Tell me. So the the way it's set up is, their intent is to put these cameras in place, and then have a, a graduated system of the first time somebody is seen doing the speeding violation, whatever they s- decide to set, um, the threshold for that, you get a warning. And then the second time, it's a certain fine. And then the third and subsequent, it's a different fine, which is all well and good in the great scheme of things. Sure. But here in Vermont especially, we've put a lot of emphasis on it's not the car's behavior. It's the operator's behavior right. to issue a violation complaint to a car. You don't know who's driving that car yeah. is not okay. You need to identify who is the person doing these behaviors much of what we do is educational yeah having the interaction and the conversation during the stop you know working our way through the the system if they're given a violation whatever it's those personal conversations and education that's being missed never mind of you know you you could loan your car to whoever and then you're getting a violation for something you had nothing to do with yeah that's that's not okay huh interesting brett what say you on this I'm I'm in agreement with him. I know I've been dealing with some different issues with some of the uh, contract towns where they want to be doing the same thing within their towns to try to get people slowed down. Um, the big thing is has to deal with just that you don't know who the operator of that vehicle is. Right. And in addition, one of the things they're going to do is they're going to be using uh, LPRs, which are license plate readers, which in most cases that's only going to be somebody that's got a Vermont license plate regular license plate because you have all these new ones that are temporary plates that are stuck up in the back window that for one we can't even read sure so obviously that license plate reader is not going to read it either um Mm -hmm. so that person is going to be driving away committed to violation and not facing any penalties huh anything more on this because uh i've seen some some chatter on Facebook uh, for and against it, uh, as I'm sure you have. But um, when do we know if this this bill is going to be taken flight? Um, it's working its way through, and uh, 
you can follow on the legislative web uh, web pages. You can look up every single thing sure. and, and track it as it progresses through. Okay. Eventually, it has to go through the governor for signature yeah. if it's going to pass. Yeah. So just keeping keeping your eyes out for it that way. Um, I'm sure there'll be all kinds of press releases when and if it's passed or any modifications as it works its way through. All right. So. Uh, any other summer campaigns that we're going to be pushing? Uh, drinking um, and driving? The DUI campaign. Basically, the DUI part runs right straight through the summer. We're obviously going to have our DUI enforcement coming up as we get time where the uh, graduations start up. And then as we get into 4th of July, we'll be doing another campaign throughout 4th of July and then again Labor Day. Okay. <clears throat> yeah, Memorial Day is going to be here soon. So yeah. um, They're looking to do, um, as July is usually a, a real heavy time for for crashes with speed yeah they're looking to do a campaign this year um having to do it just with speed enforcement uh during the month of july it, that hasn't been announced okay. as far as when it's going to occur but sounds like that's going to be put in place this summer as well all right uh question from michael uh asking about that uh that bill that we were just talking about with uh cameras being in in work zones uh he was asking uh, did it get through crossover do we know uh, crossover has happened and it's still going, so it's yes. It's still moving, yep. so, yes. so yes. Okay, all right. Yep. Uh, we're going to be watching that one carefully, too. A lot of people have a lot of opinions about that stuff. Shocker, right? Mm -hmm. yes. um, so, uh, go ahead. I, I'm going to say, one of the things I'll say, I think is part of this, trying to get this through, is because of lack of law enforcement. Um, obviously, there's not as many people out doing enforcement yeah. and trying to keep people slowed down, so... They're trying to look for another alternative. Um, hopefully, uh, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I think our feelings are mutual. That that's not the answer, but yeah. And there was some. There was some uh, with respect to what you just said. There was also some some chat about uh, uh, lately. Uh, um, I was when I say lately over the last couple of months, I saw something about uh, possibly someone trying to push a, a bill into legislature about. Uh, getting some some cameras on signs and issuing uh, automatic speeding tickets uh, here in Vermont, which I think is uh, the case in parts of, of Massachusetts, if I'm not mistaken. But um, are you are you hearing anything more about that? Nothing about that. Okay. Um, it's been the, the focus on this this highway, the, the work zone mm -hmm. thing as, as kind of the pilot program. I've heard it referred to that many times, which yeah. obviously if it starts here, it's going to continue to progress elsewhere. Sure. So I have some personal experience with one. Uh, my mother-in-law lives in Maryland, and right around the corner from her house is one of these automated cameras in a school zone. And yes, it keeps people slowed down tremendously. It does do a great job. But when you get a violation in the mail that you weren't even the one driving, it, it's a it's a problem. Yeah. And that's it's just not okay. No. Oh. So. Yeah, it can, that can get messy real fast. Right. Uh, just got a comment. Route nine in in Massachusetts uh, has got that. Um, Good times. Yeah, yeah. I'm just uh, reading some of the comments. Uh, some of the comments here. Uh, lack of law enforcement. Man, it's like Brett. How long you been doing this? In thirty fifth year. Thirty five years. Still enjoying it, so I'm still here. Wow. And Mark, I'm entering my twentieth. Okay. Puppy. Yeah. <laughs> did, did he just call you a puppy? I did. Something like that. No. Good yeah. thing we're friends. <laughs> uh, but it's it's been great to work with with Brett, though. Um, back in the day when I, I first started in law enforcement, Brett had a, a bit of a scary reputation. He's mellowed with age. But <laughs> he is a, a walking Title 23, which is, is the really? motor vehicle law here in Vermont. He is such a wealth of knowledge over the course of years and has a passion for that. Wow. And it shows. And it's been tremendous for me as, a, as an individual growing as well as our agency. We're just blessed. Wow. So. Brett, what's it like uh, working with this young chap here? Actually, it's been unfortunate with what we've had for an adventure. It's been a tough year, yeah. um, but we've been able to work. The biggest, biggest part is we're able to communicate. We're yeah. able to talk about things, things, what he's got going on, what I've got going on. Yeah. Um, I hate to say it, we talk at nighttime even. Wow. <laughs> uh, it, but, Do we want her or not? Uh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. But we're able to communicate and keep the department going, and, and it's been working well. Um, it's just been a tough year because 
everything in the world is falling down on us. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And we've we've talked about this numerous times over the last couple of years on aired out that uh, you know people just aren't tripping over themselves getting in line to be uh, in law enforcement now. Absolutely not. So since what? I've taken office, we've lost two deputies um, to retirement and one that was just his knees were, were given out and he was just done with it he has another job um, we've since hired two we were able to get um, a level three deputy from from a local agency um, he was looking for for a slightly uh, better home life and, and schedule so he yeah. came to us and we just have a new hire she's still in training right now who's going to be working in the courts so we are having some successes in hiring it's just yeah. Very few people want to do these jobs anymore. This this world is, uh, <clears throat> and and Brett, you've suggested this, and, and I, God, I, I mean, almost every day we we talk about this. This world is just uh, is nuts right now. I mean, just everything, everywhere. Um, what our kids are dealing with in in schools, um, our teachers, um, parenting is is totally different now than than it was 10, 20 years ago. Uh, there's so many factors that contribute to the amount of um, stress that uh, so many of us are, are experiencing. Um, domestic violence, I mean, is, 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 there's an uptick in pretty much everything right now. Not to be the uh, Debbie Downer this morning, but man, it's, I can't imagine you guys, um, just law enforcement, what you have to deal with every day. It's, it's, you must have to constantly be reprioritizing what you've what you've what you've got to put at the front of the list here i think that's a, when you start first thing in the morning you try to figure out what what the day is going to be and then something happens so all of a sudden that becomes the head of the of the channel and you have to deal with that <laughs> it, it never stops yep. and we've been prioritizing with our staff of when you reach the point of you need some some you time yeah it's okay to say I Just, need some time off. It's everybody's yeah. time to take take advantage of that because sure. most everyone, they're just overwhelmed. And be it, it finances, be it just it. society, everyone is under pressure. And we especially need to look out for each other because we have enough pressure in the job, never mind everything else. And I'll say this, it's not just law enforcement, it's it's first responders, it's it's everywhere. It's fire, it's, it's EMS, it's everywhere. Yes. Uh, there's just nuts Everything is crazy what's going on these days, man. Um, uh, we love you guys. I mean, what can we say? Uh, and I, 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 I'd say that even if you pulled me over tomorrow and, and gave me a ticket. I mean, there's just a high amount of respect for, for what you guys do, the hours that you put in, and the, what you have to deal with. I wouldn't be able to last five minutes. <laughs> Now, we, we you mentioned uh, body cameras earlier, and yeah. we, we've made a lot of changes in the department, and that's actually one of the, the ones we're very proud of. So he and I were, were partners for 14 years, and we always talked about, well, okay, we'd like to do this, and we'd like to, all the different things over the years that we had some success with some of them and others, but uh, the, the former sheriff liked what he liked, and he was the boss. Sure. Um, so when I came into office, we were able to change some of the things that we always wanted to change. Yeah. And uh, I see you posted from uh, Barrytown. They're having an issue with their cameras right now. And yeah. we had something very similar last spring. We used to run in-car cameras only. And they were reaching the end of their life. And then we looked at the price of them. And, oh, you can't get them for 22 months, even if you order them today. So we ended up uh, going with a body cam program. That's all we have now is every deputy wears a body cam who's working the road. We have tasers now, which is new to us. We have load carrying vests, which are new to us. And um, having had two back surgeries, that's really important to me. It's a lot more comfortable and you can take them off as we just did when we sat down here Yes. and set them yeah. aside. Uh, we've changed our cruiser markings. You might've seen the green and black striped cruisers going yeah. around. Those are ours. So we've changed the uniforms to be more comfortable, yeah. everything else. And it's a lot of the, the quality of life type stuff. We've made changes and we're very proud of those. Wow, so. wow. Uh, just got a comment here. Mark has been the best vote in for sheriff that's been made. Uh, Raylene is giving you props on working with the treatment court and saying that uh, the treatment court, Brett, is very, very lucky to have you. What's that been like? 
It's been very interesting. Uh, it's been a joy. Uh, myself and uh, the Sergeant Andrew Bent, we both are uh, actually active participants of the treatment court team. Um, it's been, I got to say, it's just been a joy. Um, we've had a couple different circumstances already where we've dealt with situations where where we, in one case, transported the person to jail. Mm-hmm. And uh, we were able to talk the entire time to jail to discuss different options, et cetera. At that time, it was kind of interesting that the person obviously didn't want to go to jail. But uh, after that, we've been thanked over and over between the family as well as that person um, for his for that person's time in jail, uh, what they learned. Um, for one, one of the benefits was that there's people at, at the facility now that uh, actually are in the same type of goal of trying to talk these people what directions they need to go and and uh, are active listeners instead of it just being a place that they go for lockup. There's somebody there actually to, can talk to them and, and be able to work with them as well. So this has been quite quite a change that I've seen that may some of it may have been there. I didn't know it, and I've been an active um, eye-opening for me. This is uh, not the the only conversation that you can give example to as, as a state transport deputy. Um, I'm sure you've had many like that. Many over the years, yes. Been many of them that have uh, been discussions that you're going to end up in jail, and they've come back and said, well, this is what I did, and yep, you said I was going to do this, and that's why I'm here. Um, so we've, we've had many of those discussions over the years when I actually worked the road. Yeah, and that, that conversation that you've had is, is something that has probably uh, stuck to the ribs for, the, for these folks um, after they've been out of your vehicle. Let's just say I've got a part of this job is the thank yous, and it's those type of people that come back and either they see you in the store or wherever, and they thank you, and that is it sends th- a lot. Talk about making a, a real difference in your community. And treatment court, man, it's like um, you're going to see failures and you're going to see incredible success stories. Yes. Yep. So there's, what, two or three treatment courts in Vermont right now? Here, Chittenden, and Here, like Chittenden, Windsor? Rutland, and then Windsor has a, a, a DUI court. Yeah. Um, it's actually going to be expanded. If I remember right, the recent conversation come uh, September, it's going to be expanded to all the courts. They're going to have one uh, treatment court uh, judge that will be in charge of all the, the courts. So they're going to be trying to expand out the program. We we now have some from the Moyle Court and in, in the Washington Court here that have uh, been transferred down. So that it's starting to expand out so we can help people in other communities as well. So You, you believe in the program? I do believe in the program now. Initially, I'd be the first to say I was probably that uh, rough person, no different than the other um, law enforcement out on the road that just don't seem to think that these people are ever going to change. Um, and I've seen it, so I have to be a true believer. Um, these people are, are human beings that we deal with. Yeah. Um, no different than us. Sure. We we live in the same communities as, as they do. Yeah. Um, is there some of the stuff that they've done as bad? Of course there is. Um, but sometimes it's because of the addiction. And once we get that uh, in check, right. which every person is different. Sure, right. One may take a month to get it taken care of. Others may be in, say, in the program for, for a year, year and a half to two years sure. um, before they start finally getting a message. But it takes that time, and people have to be able to work with that. It's treatment court is, uh, and, and this was new to me uh, a couple of years ago. I, I, had, I had never heard of it, but it's, it's basically um, you are held to a high standard of accountability and transparency in front of not only the eyes of the judge, but also who else? Yep. Who else? It's- and, and I'll say... Your you, probation you, officer, yeah, I'm guessing. You, you just made the right comment. Uh, a lot of people seem to think, um, you know, out there in the community might think that treatment court is just a, oh, it's diversion. person's just going to get away with what they did. This program is quite intense. Um, and they have a lot that they have to do. A lot of, uh, you know, treatment, um, different counseling, et cetera. It's and you pretty better, depth. And you better stick to it. They too. have to, yeah. yes. And if you um, don't? Then they face 
<laughs> well, they, they face uh, different sanctions within. Um, and if they fail the program, there's what's considered door B, which is whatever that sentence was that they agreed to. A privilege to to be able to have treatment court. Yes. yes. Yep. We're By all means. Lucky. Yep. To yep. have that opportunity. Yep. And I can say right now, I, without, I don't want to. If they want to come in and talk, by all means, uh, we have a new treatment court provider, um, or coordinator, excuse me, that just started uh, a week ago Monday. Um, but we've got some different people within the program that are new that are incredible. Who's the judge? The judge right now is uh, Judge Pack. Um, okay. He came down from Chittenden County. Before that, we had Judge Griffin, um, both top of the line. With the young Griffin was a, was a woman? Nope. No. All no. right. Okay. Uh, he actually he went up to Chittenden and okay. and Judge Pack came down. Um, they've been incredible with this program. No fooling around. No, not at all. Um, it it's all open communications, which is incredible with these people when they come in. Um, each one has to come up and to the podium and and talk with the judge. We're all part of that team and and listening um, based off of what information has happened between each uh, treatment court meeting. Um, Prior to that, we actually we have what we call staffing, where we sit down and discuss the different things that have occurred. That, that in between, from a law enforcement perspective, we know what's been going on out in the community, and we can share what's been going out in the community with uh, with these people with within the program. It's you, been really nice in some ways that they're in the program, and we have that. Um, we can talk freely with the judge. That there's been some concern about some people in the program right. that they kind of are starting to. I don't want to say fall off the radar, but we're concerned for their safety. And they ask us, and we'll go right out and try, and try to yeah. find them. And it's the human piece. Are, are you okay? Yeah. It's not are you committing a crime. It's not you did something wrong, but yeah. are you okay? And, yeah. and having that piece is, for them has been something really new. Sure. This uh, <clears throat> Judge Morrissey. We love her. She's no like, fooling around there. Yeah. Holy yeah, crap. She's actually up in Lamoille, which is the ones that we've been getting Lamoille ones is from her. She's like the, like the uh, Judge Judy of Vermont. I mean, <laughs> she, just... she used to be a prosecutor, but she is very um, to yeah. the point. Says it like it is. Yes. Yes. So. Which, frankly, we all kind of need that, right? Every we don't have while. time for yep. bullshit and, and, you know... I just love the fact that that some of these judges just they, they just say it like it is. Oh, yeah. Once upon a time, we were walking a prisoner out of her courtroom who said something he probably shouldn't. And she popped her head back towards the holding area after going, did he say what I think he said? Yeah. Yes, Your Honor. Bring him back in. And we had another little chat. Wow. It didn't go well for him. Interesting. So. Interesting. Yeah, well... Accountability. I mean, this is uh, mm -hmm. you, you know, if you're going to improve, if you're going to if you're going to get through uh, through this 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 dark side in your life, um, that it begins with accountability and being responsible and and taking ownership of, of what you've done or what you're doing and and your your problems and pushing through it. Yeah, that's that's amazing. It's amazing. And and Brett, you've been. Um, You've been involved with treatment court now for how long? Again, we're going into our second year. It started after I took office. Yeah, so, so we're going into our second year second now. Second year. Yep. Okay. Wow. Uh, Raylene posted up and something that I forgot um, that it was uh, Bevins and Sons uh, and and Yipes that uh, did the the new look on the uh, Washington County Sheriff's Department uh, vehicles. Actually, that is incorrect. That is? It is incorrect. Uh-oh. I have to fire the Nerf gun at Raylene. <laughs> I thought it was. We we uh, both thought it was. Or maybe they did Berlin. They've done Barry. Or Barry City. Town? No, Barry Town Barry. is a one as well. Okay, so Barry City, I think, yeah, Barry City, I've seen right. the cruisers there. So A1 Graphics, Pete Ainsworth does all our markings. Oh, okay, yeah, I know Pete. Yep, yep good guy, yes. good guy. Yeah, he does. He does great work. Um, uh, yeah, there's there's a whole bunch of comments that are coming in here. Um, big props to to you both for doing what you do every day, all day. Um, you know, uh, 
congratulations on getting back into Montpelier. And I'll say this, please, please come back if you can. And uh, I'll just make a matter of inviting us because half the time we just get busy and it's like, oh, it's been six months. We don't even know it. Right. We would love to have you both back um, and and others, too. I mean, anyone in law enforcement that can come and, and speak to uh, the perils of, of drinking and driving as, as we get into yeah. the warmer months, the summer months that are coming. Um we, it's. I gotta say, as we get closer to uh, the buckle up campaign, one of the things that we also we now have three uh, car seat technicians. Yeah. So we deal with putting in car seats, or assisting people with putting in car seats and teaching uh, yeah. the methods to do that. Which uh, we uh, participate in uh, different events throughout the uh, county as well as uh, outside the county. So if you need help with your child seat, come and see us. We will help you out. Or if you need one, you can get a voucher, and you can get them for free. So come and see us. I'll tell you both right now. Uh, when I put my uh, Lily's car seat in, I don't think uh, anyone has ever heard the language that was <laughs> that was coming out of my mouth. Uh, I mean, it's just a horrific experience. I just never again. Once it goes in, it's staying in for the rest of her life. Well, that, <laughs> never coming out. That's what. That's part of the reason why we're doing this program is yeah. because we're teaching people how to put the car seat in, yeah. and it's not as difficult as what people expect. Oh, yes, when- it is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, it is. <laughs> tell you right now, man. It's like... You stand right on top of it. <laughs> you, you know, it, we, we've had to take the car seat out a few times, you know, to clear out the, uh, the Ritz crackers and the... Uh, French fries and whatnot that are down there, and just putting that thing back in. Oh <laughs> man, oh man, uh, that's that's wonderful that you guys do that. Uh, we're going to be watching your page. We're going to uh, be paying attention uh, to what you're doing uh, as we get into the spring and summer months. But please feel uh, welcome to come back uh, and talk about any summer campaigns that you have. Okay. Uh, we're always always ready to push that frankly i don't think um i don't think you can talk about it uh enough especially drinking and driving um as people have questions and, yeah you know, post them right on our page ask away send us messages you know send us emails pick up the phone and call yeah. we're always around to help sure yeah easy to do um cool. and and what, what's the best what's the best number to call I mean, I mean you know these people that want to talk with you it's not necessarily an emergency so our main office number is 802-223-3001 that simple all right thanks guys and congratulations on moving back to montpelier um and like you said brett uh, a little little tight squeeze for the last uh half a year plus <laughs> Uh, here in the Granite City, um, or uh, right on around the corner from Domino's, but uh, we're glad that you guys were here. It was nice to uh, to have you in town. What was your What was your favorite uh, restaurant or eatery in the Granite well, City? Well, I think we both know uh, we have what we call a bat cave. To our utility room, we literally have a uh, walkway that walks into Domino's. That's dangerous. Oh, oh so <laughs> the, the minute we moved in, the fact that Domino's is out front and Dunkin' Donuts is next door, I'm ah. like, we're all going to get fat. No. Uh, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah, that's crazy. We, we've spread the wealth, though. We've made our way up through Main we Street, have. stopping oh. at different places. But, Man. yes, no, the easy one is just to walk through the back cave. Oh, that is <laughs> so funny. Uh, thanks, guys. Thanks so much for coming in. Thank you, sir. All right. And thanks for liking and following the page. Don't forget to comment to share any episode that you enjoy. We are always live, always local, never edited, and seen and heard on Facebook and YouTube from Fly on the Wall Productions, streamed everywhere you get your podcasts, and on the web at airedoutvt.com. Have a great day, everyone. We'll catch you again tomorrow morning right here on Aired Out.